that is without their father. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, fatherhood is a position that God has granted for the good. And that's why the enemy has always worked against it toward the worst. The enemy knows that if he can eliminate the male influence and presence from the home, then he will be successful in conquering that home. Yes. The enemy has always set to pull the man out of the equation. Yes. And then when he does that, he takes away the strength that that home has to survive throughout history. When you look at the Bible, you see that the enemy has always sought to eliminate the man in order to weaken the nation. Notice in Exodus chapter 18, in Exodus, Exodus chapter 1 rather, Exodus chapter 1, when this new Pharaoh became king over Egypt, he didn't understand the benefit that Joseph played in the land. Bible says he was threatened by the size, the growth, and the might of the Israelites. Bible says in Exodus chapter 1 and beginning in verse 8, Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of Israel are more and mightier than we. He says, Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and they come to pass when they fall without any war, when they, they, when they fall out any war, that they join also to our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. And so he decided to set taskmasters over them to afflict them with burdens. The Bible says, and the more they afflicted them, verse yes, 12, sir. the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Well, Pharaoh comes up with a secondary plan. He's got to find a way to weaken the nation. And if he's going to weaken the nation, he recognizes that one of the ways in which he's going to be successful in doing that is making sure that the men die out. Yes, sir. Notice what he says here, yeah. getting a verse number 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shapira and the other Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. The enemy has always sought to kill the man power. By destroying the man. Even in Matthew chapter 2, we see those same actions with Herod. As Herod has been informed that there is one who has been born king of the Jews. Matthew chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 16. And in order to make sure that he keeps his control. In order to make sure he keeps his rule and his treacherous reign. He seeks to kill all of the male children from two years and under. So that he could remain king over Israel. The Bible says in Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men. Was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. In the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time in which he had diligently inquired of the wise men my brothers and sisters it just shows us how far the enemy is willing to go to take control of our homes it shows us how far the enemy is willing to go to take control of our city and thus take control of the country the enemy is still looking to delete the man power out of the home. We have allowed things to happen in our own home that our boys are not growing up and becoming men. Even before they reach their teen years, they got a record with the law. Even before they can get good to the age of accountability, they've seen so much devilment and they've watched so much happen in our lives and manhood is far from the priority of their minds. Oh yes, once more and again, the enemy in 2012 is seeking to delete the manpower from the home. And he's doing it through these false ideas.
ideas about fatherhood. Let me show you some of these false ideas concerning fatherhood, and then this lesson will be yours. First of all, false idea number one is that it's mama's job to rear the children. That's a false idea when it comes to fatherhood. And I've heard more men say that should have said it. I just leave all that to their mama. Uh -huh. Amen up in here. I don't worry about all that. I let their mama take care of all that. That's a false idea and concept of fatherhood. That woman didn't get that baby by herself. No, no. And open here. Oh, you were a contributor right. to her having that seed inside of her. She bore the child. For nine and sometimes plus months. Oh. She had her body disfigured and her hormones thrown out of whack, giving birth to a seed that you planted in her. Yeah. And the least you could do once the child gets here is man up and take care of your role as the father to that child. Amen. It's not mama's job right. to rear the children. Uh, Y'all looking for Ephesians chapter 6. I got Bible for all that right there. Right, Ephesians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Our very text teaches us that when God was setting up the proper structure for the home, mm -hmm. in chapter 5 of Ephesians, right. he instructed the wives to submit to their husbands. He instructed the husbands to love their wives. In chapter 6, he instructs the children to obey their parents. And then he talks to the fathers and tells them, don't leave the rearing to mom. Right now. <laughs> I got tickled right there because it just occurred to me why we have so many men. Leaving the rearing of the children to mama. Mm -hmm. The men that some of you are mad are nothing but mama's boys. <laughs> Hello in here. All they know is mama. And when a grown man doesn't have sense enough to let go of mama and be daddy to his own children. No wonder he said, I just leave all that to their mom. He's a mama's boy himself. Hey, man, it just occurred to me. Why? Some men don't think that it's their responsibility to take care of their children. Notice what the Bible says. And ye fathers. Bible is talking specifically to the men. God says, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Yeah. How can I raise an angry child? Okay. That's what it means yeah. to provoke him to wrath. You raise an angry child. Mm -hmm. How can I be guilty of provoking my child? Correct. Because I don't bring him up. Right. Y'all get that? Amen. He tells them to not provoke them to wrath. Mm -hmm. But I, let me show you how not to raise an angry child. You've got to play a significant role and part. In that child's life. That's the reason why we have so many angry children. Daddy is missing from the equation of what God intended to be a normal childhood. Mm -hmm. A child who's without their father has a void that mama just cannot feel. She can do the best she can to provide. She can do the best she can to try to help them to instill more.